Hello and welcome to this Hub4 tutorial which will take a look at the effects engine. Effects are created by applying a waveform such as a sine wave around a base value of a parameter such as an intensity level, position or colour. Various stock effects are available in the effects directory which can be opened by double pressing the effect key or holding down the open key and pressing effect. You will see that the effects engine table also opens. Select some fixtures, apply a base value which will be the centre point for the effect and then choose an effect such as circle from the directory. The fixtures will then start to move in a circle around the base position. Several parameters can now be changed either by editing the cells in the table or via two pages of encoders which can be accessed by pressing the effect key. The blue highlighted parameters in the table show which parameters are currently under the control of the encoders. Both can be controlled together or in this example pan and tilt can be changed independently. To turn the circle into an oval effect deselect the tilt and increase the size of the pan. Speed the whole effect up by reselecting the tilt and turning the effect rate encoder. To offset the fixtures, hold down the fan key and turn the effects offset encoder. It isn't necessary to select a stock effect from the effect directory. Custom effects can also be created. Select the fixtures again and assign a step waveform directly from the effects table by selecting the table cell, pressing the set key and choosing step from the drop down menu. To make the fixtures step between two specific values, use the effects begin and end parameters to assign those values, in this case 0 and 100%. By changing the begin and end point, the console automatically calculates the base intensity level and also the effect size to the appropriate values. It is also possible to set an effect start point to specify exactly what value the effect will start at. To quickly offset all 30 fixtures evenly, type 0 through 348 degrees into the offset cell. Remember that 0 and 360 degrees is the same offset, so typing 0 through 360 degrees would give fixtures 1 and 30 the same offset. There is one more effect parameter controllable via the encoders, which is the effect length. This changes the proportion of the effects period that it is active for, so if the length is decreased, the time between each cycle of the waveform is increased. The remaining effect parameters can be changed from the effects table. Nshot determines how many cycles of the waveform will run before the effect stops. Unless a number is entered into this cell, the effect will run indefinitely. When bounce is turned on, the effect will run for one full cycle in one direction and then another cycle in the reverse direction. The two directions will continue to alternate. Direction allows you to specify whether the effect will run forwards or backwards. In the case of a circle, for example, this would determine whether the fixtures move in a clockwise or anti-clockwise direction. Finally, effect fade and delay times along with a path can be assigned, allowing for control over the transition of effects. Complex looking effects can be created very easily in the effects engine, but when offsetting one parameter against another, it can be helpful to quickly go into blind mode and then out again to restart the whole effect, synchronising the various components to accurately see how the effect will look when played back. Effects can also be built or updated in editors, and values are displayed by selecting the various different buttons along the top of an editor window. Once an effect has been set up, either in an editor or the effects engine, it can then be recorded as an effect palette in the effect directory. By default, only the effect information will be stored, so if the effect is specific, remember to mask in the base value of the effect, which in this example is intensity. If only the effect is stored, then it can be applied to any base value. When an effect is recorded for a range of fixtures with different offset values, the palette is recorded as per fixture and can only be applied to those fixtures. For a complex effect, it can be useful to make a second palette with only the information for one fixture. 
Record this as a global palette and then it can be quickly applied to any number of different fixtures or fixture types. Once an effect is then recorded to a cue, the effect rate and size can be easily modified by holding down choose and turning the second or third encoder wheels. Since version 2.2.0, it is now also possible to control these via scale masters. Hold down pig and press choose to access the list options and select the master tab. From the drop down menu, select scale effect rate or scale effect size and configure the upper bound and lower bound multiplier for the fader position. In a playback scenario, the fader can quickly be assigned to control size, rate or intensity by holding down choose and touching the boxes above the encoder wheels. To stop an effect, select the fixtures and choose off from the table column of the effects engine for the parameters you wish to stop the effect for. You won't see the effect stop, but this off effect value can be recorded into a palette or queue. Alternatively, by assigning a new intensity level or position for example, an off effect is also included automatically in the programmer. In this situation the effect will stop live. Should you wish the effect to continue around the newly assigned base value, then simply mask out the off effect in the mask menu when recording the queue. In the next tutorial we will look at CITP and Catalyst configuration. Thank you for watching.